Okay, as promised, we would get to a real drawing. And this is a real drawing. Now, first thing we're going to look at, <clears throat> and the, the purpose of this video is to get us familiar with looking at the different components that make up a drawing. Uh, it's more than just the part views and the dimensions and tolerances. Now, as we look at this drawing, the object, which you can see, only makes up part of the drawing. There's a lot more going going on here for such a simple part, right? Here's the object views. Um, this object should look familiar. It is our block, which was essentially a flat plate with a hole in the center. Um, and there's some things on here that sh will not look familiar, at least not from the videos that we've done so far. So I am going to cross out a couple of those. And th that's these items here. Now, I wanted to get you to a real drawing, but we have yet to cover what is known as GD&T, or Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing. So the things I'm crossing out in red, um, I want you to ignore. As for the rest of it, um, it should all, what's in the field of the drawing here, should all look familiar. Um, we've got our four inch block, right? And it's uh, four inches by four inches. And we've got our three quarters of an inch hole with the two thousandths tolerance that we talked about in the tolerancing video. It's one inch thick. We've tightened the tolerance up. It's if you if you remember from the previous video, it was plus or minus ten thousandths. Um, it's now plus or minus one thousandths of an inch. Okay. Um, but otherwise, this drawing essentially looks the same as, as this object we used in the previous video. You will, however, note that the drawing contains some other information here. Uh, for starters, there's a border right around the field of the drawing. We've got some notes down here. Right, and we've got something here called a title block. Down here, and then we've got something up here. This is called a revision block. And then we've got, and you won't always see this, but usually you will. We've got some uh, letters going vertically up each side of the drawing border, right? And then we've got numbers going across. Okay. And what these are, it's uh, like Battleship, right? The, the old game Battleship. Um, if I wanted to describe an uh, an object on the telephone if I was talking to an engineer or if I was writing an email and I had a question about a certain part of the drawing uh, particularly on a large drawing let's say I had a question about this letter C in the box with the red X through it right um, to quickly communicate where on the drawing I was talking about I could refer to this what we call a zone right and I'm going to draw a line across here so I could call up and say, hey, Mr. Engineer, there's a, uh, in zone D4, right, D4, of your drawing, there's a box with a letter C and a red X through it. What the heck's going on? And he could say, well, I heard that you haven't learned about G, D, and T yet, so I took it off of the drawing, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so that's what these letters are going around the outside. So we've got a note section. We've got a title block, we've got a revision block, 
and we have a border that may have grid indicators on it so that we can easily communicate locations of the drawing. Now we're going to first look at the title block. and see what's going on in the title block. Well, first of all, here's the you know the name of the company and the logo. We usually see that stuff, right? Then we've got a title. Imagine that, a title in our title block. And the title here, this is not a title block, but this is the title of the part or the name of the part in this case is a block. I guess we could have named it something more original. Um, then we've got uh, here this letter B, and that just refers to the the original size of the drawing. Um, this is becoming a less important these days, but um, if you were imagine that you were in a reproduction uh, department, you know. Um, and you were responsible for making copies of drawings, right? It, it would be pretty helpful if when you pulled the drawing out, you know, you could look in the title block and see, okay, what size paper do I need to copy this onto when you're dealing with multiple sizes of drawings? In the, um, in the ANSI uh, system of drawing sizes, ANSI, which is the American National standards I'm abbreviating here Institute All right and the ANSI standard drawing sizes are A B C D E um, J size I don't know if there's an F size in there or not um, each of those has a standard size so an A size is your standard eight and a half by eleven sheet or eleven or letter size paper uh, B size in this case is your 11 by 17 or what's known as ledger paper and the size is going up and that's all that means and if they're ISO or DIN they'll have a different uh, different letters they have A1 etc and that just tells you the size paper that the original drawing as it was drawn was intended to be printed on uh, over here we have the scale Okay, and that just tells us again at the original size the drawing was intended to be printed, what scale it was, and this is telling us that our drawing is one to one. Now, that could be written as a fraction, often it will be like one over one. Um, and if the scale was half scale, for example, or one inch equals two inches, one to two. Uh, what that would mean is, I'm sorry, got that backwards, two inches, that was correct, one to two, which is the same as one equals two, it's getting late, um, that would mean that one inch on the drawing equals two inches in real life, um, which would be the same as half scale. Then there'll be often a release date. Um, that may be somewhere else, but in this drawing format, it's here. Um, there's the weight of the part. And again, that's optional information. It may not be on all title blocks. Uh, and then over here is the sheet number. In this case, it's a single sheet drawing um, that we're only dealing with one total sheet. Right? But it could be if, let's say, that there was. Uh, three sheets to this drawing then you would have like one of one one of three sorry two of three would be like the next sheet separate sheet and then three of three right would be the last sheet so that that's what this block is for so you know in this case with this one sheet of paper in your hand you know I have the entire drawing whereas if you had sheet three of three and that's all you had you would sit look at it and say hmm there's two more sheets to this drawing. And we have something called the revision. And that just means each time the drawing is revised, the drafter will increase this 
letter. And it starts with a dash, and then when he makes a revision to the drawing, say he adds another hole to the drawing, that becomes revision A. And then we go to revision B, and C, and so on. Right? Now, some companies use different formats. Letters are most common. Some may use numbers. Uh, sometimes the first rev is not a dash. Sometimes it'll say original or IR for initial release. The conventions vary by companies. But rev dash is common for an initial release. And then rev A would be next, B, C, D, etc. Um, next piece of information is often, not always, something called a cage code. Okay, And um, a cage code is also known as an FSCM. Right? And uh, I'm going to change colors because we've got too much purple here. Um, an FSCM just means it, it's, a, it's, it's a federal supply code for manufacturers. And that's just an um, identification number that the government uses. So you register your company with the government and uh, the U.S. government. And it's a, it's a unique identifier for each company. And so when that number is in the title block, it tells you who has the design authority for this product that's represented on the drawing um, and using their federally issued identification number. Now, not all companies have those, but anybody who does business with the government will have one, certainly any defense contractors. Um, then, then we have a drawing number, and that's just a unique number for this document. Uh, oftentimes the part number of the part on the drawing will match this or it will be you know this drawing number with a dash number appended to it or something like that but not always um, what this number represents is the unique document number it identifies this document now we've got whoever was the designer when he approved this drawing and the approver which may be his boss um, depending on the complexity of the organization and the, the approval process there may be many signatures here or many sign-offs uh, in aircraft um, design there may be a stress person stress analysis person a weights person um, a whole list of, of departments that would have to sign off on a drawing uh, and nowadays because Many times these sign-offs are done in a database somewhere. It may just say signature on file or something to that effect. And the last piece of information that we want to talk about that's very important is the tolerance block.